We're about to spill the tea on Peter O'Toole. Talented? Absolutely. Womanizer? You bet. Booze aficionado? That's just the beginning. This Hollywood icon knew how to stir up a storm wherever he went, and sometimes things got a bit too wild. But hold tight. In a fit of alcohol fueled fury, this maverick shattered his best friend's heart by unleashing a secret so shocking it'll make your jaw drop. As a teenager, Peter O'Toole wrote in his notebook, I will not be a common man, I will stir the smooth sands of monotony. And he did precisely that and more. He more than stirred the smooth sands of monotony, he excavated the sands. Peter did crazy things, and some of them almost killed him. When O'Toole married the elegant Sean Phillips, he bought her a Morris Minor, and that same night he took the car home. He borrowed it. Where did he go to? Peter went on to have an incredible amount of drinks. Now he had the money to get a hotel and pass the night, so he wouldn't have to drive while drunk. But what did Peter do instead? He decided to take a big risk. The actor chose to drive himself home. And did you know what he did next? He rammed the car into a squad car. He got arrested, and his wife had to come and bail him out. Thank goodness he survived the car crash. It wasn't the only time he did something crazy involving his wife. The man was impulsive, so he had crazy things tucked away in his breast pocket, and it looked like the actor mistook impulsiveness for being romantic. What a man! Once he drove his wife in a dashing yellow sports car and told her to grab her passport and hop in. The destination? Rome, O'Toole said. But they roamed to Yugoslavia when the terrific driver, Peter, took a wrong turn. What a romantic getaway. But did it end there? What do you think? Peter's far too unhinged for him to be normal. The man once hauled out his wife's wardrobe full of clothes because he didn't like how she dressed. He promised to get her new ones, but he didn't until later, and Sean had to wear his clothes for three days. Remember doing antics that almost killed him, which we mentioned earlier? Another one happened when he went to a party a local dignitary invited him to. The star got there, was having fun, and predictably got into trouble. He threw a glass of champagne in the host's face. Now the host was a connected man. If you catch our drift and what O'Toole did, he could have been strangled or shot. It wasn't only his life that the actor used to take magnificent risks. He sometimes used his wealth too. And no, we aren't talking about the time he gambled away nine months' pay in a single night after an alcohol-induced decision. We're talking about his other booze-informed decision. One night the actor was out with his usual antics, and things took a strange turn. He and his buddy Peter Finch were drinking normally, and it was time to go home. While Peter had a wife at home, he wasn't eager to return to her, so to keep the bar open Peter took out his checkbook and bought the pub then and there. So the merry continued into the following day when Peter woke and realised what he had done. He ran to meet the pub owner, and thankfully the man hadn't cashed the cheque. Peter was saved. O'Toole became friends with the pub owner, and remained so until the man died. He went to the man's funeral, but before he got there, he had drunk heavily. Peter began to be noisily emotional at the graveside, and he was at the wrong funeral. Classic Peter. It wouldn't be the first time drinking had made him make a mess of himself. When he was on the set of his breakout film, Lawrence of Arabia, things went overboard more often than not. If Peter wasn't partying, he was gambling or looking for women. It was as if his real occupation was hell-raising and acting as his side work. The actor and his castmate Omar took their women hunting too far. While looking for a courtesan house, the actor and his friend found one, but it wasn't the kind they were looking for. These two guys didn't find out quickly enough because they couldn't think straight in their state. Peter and Omar Sharif had walked into a nunnery. How the habit of the nuns didn't hint to them as to where they were would forever be a mystery. But that wouldn't be the only time the actor would be clueless. Did you know he had intimate with a person born as a man? And Peter doesn't even like nuns because of his childhood, which we'll tell you about next. Also, there's a bit about Peter fighting with his friend Richard Burton because of the elegant Elizabeth Taylor. 
Peter O'Toole was born on the 2nd of August 1932 in Leeds, West Riding of Yorkshire, England. If you wonder why Peter had issues sitting down in a place, loved drinking and causing trouble, you could blame his father for that. Peter's dad was an Irishman, whose many works included being a bookmaker. The man always walked around with cigarettes and a pint of drink in his hands. Due to the star's dad's work as a bookmaker, the family moved around a lot, which didn't allow the actor to develop the sense of settling in a place for long when he was young. However, when the actor settled, he did it away from his family, which didn't give him that sense of being with a family. This would later affect his marriage and his ability to be a father. The actor spent about seven years in St. Joseph's Secondary School in Hunslet, where he developed a fear and dislike for nuns. They didn't spare the rod when it came to dealing with children and with how Peter was. You would know he got at the end of the rod most often. Getting raised in a Catholic environment in his teenage years only raised the actor's curiosity about women, and he experienced something he had no right to experience. As a teenager, the actor met a courtesan who came from Spain to England. The woman chose to shower O'Toole with sexual attention after her husband died, and the actor, who was eager for such an encounter, didn't mind. He visited the woman often and learned a great deal from her. However, the star stopped going to see her when she proposed something that felt outrageous even to the actor. His first experience created a man who made it a duty to sleep with as many women as possible. He was out of control, which landed him in a big mess. Well, not a big mess, but it was still one. It all began with Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth was a sucker for talented men, and Peter was one. He had looks that'll make an angel swoon and be filled with lust. His talent and looks made him a lethal combination for any woman, and in other cases men. Yes, men. The actor received advances from men. Allegedly, Cary Grant invited the actor to eat dinner at his hotel. No, Peter didn't go. He didn't fancy men. Elizabeth saw O'Toole after his Shakespeare performances and allegedly got drawn to the actor. Who wouldn't? Have you seen Peter's piercing blue eyes? It looked like staring at paradise itself. Elizabeth was married, but allegedly this didn't stop her from inviting the actor to her hotel room. The purpose of the invite was to talk to him about her upcoming film, Cleopatra, and if he would like to star in it. The two discovered they had a chemistry that could translate into the screen as they wrestled in the sheets. Amazingly, Peter, who had been around the block, was nervous around Elizabeth, but he rose to the occasion. The pair began a steamy affair, not minding they were both married, and they took their bedroom chemistry to the screen for the film Under Milk Wood. The film performed horribly. When Elizabeth divorced Fisher to be with Richard Burton, the affair continued despite Burton being Peter's friend, so the two of them shared the same woman. But it wouldn't be the first time they would be with the same woman. When Peter met Ava Gardner through John Houston in 1960, Ava decided she wanted to test if the legend of the actor's prowess was true. Ava seduced Peter, and the two began an endeavour that lasted for three nights. After that, the two of them reconnected four years later. This time, Peter called his best bud Burton to help him satisfy Ava, who had a fire raging inside of her. Richard Burton joined his friend and didn't care he was already married to Elizabeth Taylor. Even with the two of them spending time with Ava, they barely got the job done. As Richard was returning to his wife, so did Peter. Peter began to smuggle Elizabeth, his friend's wife, to the set of his film so they could have fun. But along the line, Taylor and O'Toole stopped seeing each other, with the secret of their relationship mostly intact. Except Peter wouldn't keep the secret to himself, and it wasn't his fault. The alcohol made him blurt it out. It was his fault, as he had too much to drink again. It was a typical night for the two friends. They were on a yacht and were having fun. However, things soon took a dark turn. The friendly banter between the two friends turned vicious. While arguing who was the better actor between the two of them, O'Toole, not seeing any other point to counter his buddy, shouted, "'I've been boffing your wife for years, and she tells me I'm much better in the sack.' Richard froze with shock after Peter's revelation. His best bud was sleeping with his wife. Richard left the yacht, and for days he didn't return home. When he did, things between him and Peter froze a bit. Years of friendship gone, because one had to brag. 
However, the two of them made up, but their friendship was already doomed. When the two of them resumed their friendship, they continued their hell-raising, and things got embarrassing, even by their standards. While filled to the brim with drinks, they slept on the bar floor and began singing birthday songs for each other for hours. Yikes! Elizabeth was angry. She gave her husband a choice, her or Peter. Richard made a choice, and it wasn't his best buddy. The actor met Peter and told him that Elizabeth didn't like them being together. Peter wouldn't forgive Elizabeth for what she did. He referred to her as that woman from then on. But did Peter stop with the hell-raising? You bet he didn't. He even got into more trouble worse than the one he did with Elizabeth. It involved the delectable Audrey Hepburn. While Audrey was married, she had a passionate affair with O'Toole, and her reasons would shock you. The woman claimed they needed to have an affair so they'll build the chemistry they needed for a sublime on-screen performance for the heist comedy How to Steal a Million. The two of them weren't careful. During filming, Audrey noticed something. She had gotten pregnant. What should have been good news became a source of distress for her. She wasn't sure if the baby belonged to O'Toole or her husband, actor Mel Ferrer. Audrey eventually lost the baby, and the stress caused her relationship with Peter to crumble. But this didn't stop Peter from being who he was. The man continued to cause trouble and be with many women. Did you know he was with Marilyn Monroe? No, he wasn't, but he was with the British actress version of Marilyn, Diana Dawes. Diana had an easy time seducing the actor in her flat in London. After their initial romp, the two met two weeks after the actress organised a party and invited the actor. While Peter didn't mind the activities, his purpose for going was to meet Bruce Cabot. However, usually Peter went to meet the woman he had affairs with just for affairs and not for another purpose. When he met Jane Mansfield, a blonde bombshell like Marilyn, the purpose was for fun and nothing more. The two began their night with three bottles of champagne, followed by a fling that started in London and ended in her heart-shaped pool in Los Angeles. The man had an irresistible charm, and even princesses weren't immune. Reportedly, Peter and Princess Margaret were hot items back in the day. We know, a princess. She should be way out of his league, but Margaret had a knack for dancing with the stars. Reports say she and the actor David Niven had a thing. There are even some whispers about her and Peter Sellers. Wow! Margaret was so different from her sister Elizabeth, who was a renowned prude. Peter and the princess met at a period she needed comfort. The princess had issues with her husband, Lord Snowden, and needed somebody to talk to. After seeing Peter in his Lord Jim performances, the royal was struck by him and met him. They began to have an affair, and rumours say it lasted eight years. People claimed the princess allowed the actor to drive her Rolls Royce because of their affair. They also said it was because of this that the princess dropped in on the star during his production of Macbeth. Then there were the numerous times Peter visited Kensington Palace at the invitation of the princess. Speaking of invitations, the princess invited the actor to the famous Villa Taylor in Marrakesh. The villa's owner gave the princess the room Churchill and Roosevelt had stayed in during the 1943 Casablanca conference. They had so much fun that they scheduled another visit to Morocco. Then Margaret reportedly called the actor to join her on vacation to Mystique Island in the Caribbean. But Peter would not always have his way. An actress resisted his charms. Catherine Hepburn didn't see the hype about the actor, but with her alleged sexual preference, it is understandable that she didn't see O'Toole the way other women saw him. But Peter wasn't the kind to give up, and he tried talking to the actress, but he didn't get to as he hurt himself while trying. The two of them were to shoot a lake scene, and Peter decided to paddle out and speak with Hepburn, but he trapped his finger between their boats, and the tip came off. Peter returned to land with his disappointment and fingertip preserved in brandy. He put the tip on later, but found out that he put it with the back facing the front. To Peter that was a small price to pay for his adventures, but the actor paid a higher price. After years of drinking, Peter became severely sick, and it turned out that he had stomach cancer. But around the time the doctors found out, much of his stomach had been affected. So the actor had surgery, and the doctors removed the affected parts. The actor recovered, but he wasn't quite in the clear. Many years later, the cancer returned in 2012, and this time it killed him. 
Peter lived his life doing what he wanted, but eventually the consequence of his mindless fun was losing his life. Hungry for more untold stories from the golden era of Hollywood? Click on the next video. Was Stuart Granger a perfect replacement for Cary Grant?